so hello hello everyone welcome to all of those who are new and welcome back to the channel we are here for a divine counterpart reading today i'm using my mirror of the soul tarot i am using my vice versa tarot and my shadowscapes tarot i've got all three decks on hand and i've got the healing like tarot on standby so we are going to get into some divine masculine divine feminine energies if you would like a reading similar to this one talking about divine masculine and divine feminine whether you receive it as a counterpart reading or aspects within your own self mirroring in your experiences with other people the best way to do that would be to book my divine duality secret codename event um on etsy okay my etsy link is in the description the description is updated you will find a cool new store in there i started a teespring store so you can get a lot of the merchandise that i was selling before in my etsy but now with more options it's more affordable um they ship to you directly so it, it gets to you faster so if you guys are interested in any of the merch the Teespring shop is open and I'm going to be continuing to add new things, all of my own designs in there. So with that said, let's get into these energies. All right, let's get into these energies. We're going to start with the Divine Masculine, Divine Masculine counterpart or the Divine Masculine aspect within the self. The Divine Masculine aspect is the willpower, it is the shot calling ability within the self. It is the action. It is the deciding factor, okay? Everything that we choose, we choose because of our yang, masculine energy, okay? <clears throat> it is the doing and the thinking, okay? And the thinking, it is the mind and the thoughts, all right? It is also the ego. So keep in mind when we're talking about the masculine it is not just the counterpart but also a facet of yourself with that let's start with the mirror of the soul tarot what's going on with the divine masculine please spirit for those who would catch this in divine time despite it being four and recorded in february time runs in a spiral so there may be something going on in divine time when you catch this that would bring you back to the energies that we are recording now so what is going on with the masculine please we got the six of cups in the reverse and the four of cups in the reverse which is ten cups in reverse and then we have the four of coins and the princess of cups divine masculine might be struggling um the divine masculine counterpart may be struggling financially they may be trying to hold it together and they may feel extremely isolated like they're completely closed in like they have nowhere to go or be in their own energy. They may also be struggling with apologizing to a sacred soulmate. So if your divine counterparts in separation and resonate as the feminine, um, they may be having a hard time coming into the vibration of apology, which is also self-forgiveness because that is those are the two crossing energies. I feel like if the divine masculine counterpart is in another dynamic, romantic or otherwise, that they definitely want to get out. I definitely feel like they feel boxed in. And I feel like they're missing an opportunity to apologize. Okay, I do feel like they're missing it, but they want to. I feel like they want to with the four of cups in the reverse. I think that that will is there. Give me some more insight into the masculine, please. Give me some more insight into the masculine, please. Yeah, they might be in the process of cutting off uh, third parties with the prince of swords. The prince of swords, the princes in this particular deck are the kings. 
and you can see the swords drawn. All of the third party cords, dead weight are connected down here and he's about to swipe them off. Definitely, um, definitely thinking about cutting off third parties. It's dead weight. It's dead energetic weight. They're not moving. They're lying on the ground. They're fucking around. Like, they're not. Whoever the third party energies are. I feel like a certain amount of disgust with the masculine, too, to be fair, as the, as the, the counterpart. And the mind itself may be disgusted with people who, you know, if you're the feminine, your own mental space might be really fucking done with third parties or catalyst energies in general. What is going on with the feminine? What is going on with the feminine counterpart? Now the feminine is the receptive energy. It's the heart space. It's the feelings. It's the intuition. It's the gut sensing. It is the receiving, right? It is what we receive from the experience and what we receive is how we feel, right? We always receive a feeling. No matter what we go through, we feel something about it. Um, and so the divine feminine is how we receive or feel about the experience. All right, clarities, please. We got the Ten of Cups and the Eight of Coins. The divine masculine counterpart in their own heart space might really be desiring uh, the Ten of Cups, which is the dream. However, that's definitely going to, uh, that requires an initiation, that requires a spark, that requires ignition. The car ain't going to start without <laughs> you putting the key in and turning it, you know what I mean? And the two of coin, clarifying the eight of coin for a total of ten coins. Really, we've got double fours here. We've got double tens and a one here. Fours and ones might be significant. I'm feeling like the heart space knows that the work needs to be put in to balance things, okay? I think that the heart space knows it's going round and round in a cycle, which means the efforts towards being new in general need to happen. There needs to be an actual, you know, like you have to initiate your new version and get into a cycle of fulfillment. Otherwise, you're going to keep going around in this infinite loop of eating your own tail kind of thing, right? It's very Ouroboros energy here. There needs to be balance of masculine and feminine. And the heart knows it. Fire and water, earth and air. This is Jupiter and Capricorn energy. A choice has to be made. The heart already knows it. A choice has to be made. And the, the difficult choice is fulfillment. Feeling, right? Feeling full. Because whatever the, ex the experience is right now, it doesn't feel full. It doesn't feel complete. The dream hasn't quite come together yet, right? Sun and Virgo, there's more steps that need to be taken. There's more steps that need to be taken. And it needs a spark. Give me more insight into the Divine Feminine, please.
give me more insight into the divine feminine please the hierophant divine feminine is committed got the queen of cups on bottom the empress on top it doesn't get any more divine feminine than that committed into the divine feminine energy okay the divine feminine is what is on the conscious mind of both the masculine counterpart and feminine counterpart so the divine feminine is focused on the self committed to the self committed to the emotional fulfillment committed to the physical reality the dream become made manifest the home getting out of karmic cycles the heart the heart space right divine feminine regardless of which counterpart the divine feminine wants to be committed to the emotional fulfillment and the dream made manifest they know that it takes effort and that the key is required like there's an action required an action or multiple actions because right now regardless of which counterpart the divine masculine definitely feels like third parties need to get cut off they definitely feel if they're not isolated that they may want to isolate they may want to be on their own and apart from a past life soulmate connection i don't think they want to miss an opportunity to at the very least get closure like the self-forgiveness that opportunity can't be missed and i definitely feel like apologies could be exchanged between counterparts the masculine right now is definitely thinking about apologizing at the very least they're forgiving themselves i think they went after a third party that ultimately definitely definitely needs to get cut off okay so specifically in regards to counterparts what is the divine masculine think about the divine feminine or what are their actions in regards to the divine feminine right now where's the actions of the divine masculine counterpart what is the action of the divine masculine counterpart masculine is working on something and it might very well be a third party situation with the three of coins it's a contract it's a contract they're working on the details what are their actions right now the divine masculine counterpart what actions are they taking right now uh whatever they're working on they're striking out they're focused on a lot of little details they're working on it and they're rolling snake eyes they might feel like they are the only one working they might feel like they are the only one working and have nothing to show for it they might feel like they're putting in all the effort right with these third parties they're the one putting in all the effort and these third parties are just lying around doing fucking nothing they're just dead weight so they might feel like they're actively the only one doing anything and they've got nothing to show for it what 
What is the Divine Feminine doing? Where are the actions of the Divine Feminine? Counterpart. Where are the actions of the Divine Feminine? Counterpart. What are they doing? We've got the King of Swords. What else? They're definitely standing in their power. They've, they're standing in their wisdom. The King of Swords in this face is powerful. The Claymore is huge, right? The truth is huge. And he's got the butterfly on his armor, on his chest plate. And you can see the gray hair, like they're wise. The Divine Feminine is acting in wisdom, okay? This is action. They're acting in wisdom, they're acting in alignment with truth. The hawk is on the card. They're getting messages from the divine. So the divine feminine counterpart is definitely in alignment with wisdom. And they know how far they've come. This temperance energy, right, in the back face is looking at the gallows of the hanged man. Where the hanged man was hanging at one point in the deck in the story. And the temperance is, you're not there anymore. The divine feminine is not on pause. The Divine Feminine has that wisdom, again, being reiterated with the eagle here. Highest sight. And the lion, which is sitting very tamed. The ego's not roaring. They're in their high feminine energy. They've definitely earned their wings. <laughs> They've earned their wings. And they might most definitely have their back to the masculine. I think that they're clearly in a, in a position of power. Sagittarius and Aquarian energy. This is higher wisdom and higher perspective. Sagittarius is wisdom and Aquarius is perspective. They see the bigger picture. The feminine counterpart is acting on the bigger picture, whether they realize it or not. What does the masculine feel in regards to the feminine? What does the masculine counterpart feel in regards to the feminine counterpart? What does the masculine counterpart feel specifically in regards to the feminine counterpart? The Ace of Pentacles. Really chameleons on the card. They feel like the feminine has completely morphed. They feel like the feminine is solid. They feel like the feminine is solid. Ace of Pentacles, that's a solid, that's a solid beginning. What else do they feel about the feminine? The Nine of Cups, she's the wish fulfillment. <laughs> Whatever alignment the feminine is in, the masculine fucking wants it. They want the new beginning. They want the they want the wish. They want the feminine. They want the feminine. They want a new beginning with the feminine. They want a solid beginning with her. I say her, but you know, take it as it resonates. Yeah, masculine wants the feminine. What does the divine feminine feel about the divine masculine? What does the divine feminine feel in regards to the divine masculine? What does the divine feminine counterpart feel in regards to the divine masculine counterpart?
They feel like if the masculine reinvented themselves, there could be joy. Otherwise, they feel like the masculine dealing with third parties is like a child. As a child, the Page of Wands is not mature like the King of Swords. It's not grown. It's not wise. You know, the Wands is the first suit. It's possible that the Divine Feminine counterpart is looking at the Divine Masculine counterpart like they're immature. And that they're hung up on third parties. I think that the feminine feels, should the masculine start singing a different tune and start to reinvent themselves, right? Phoenix energy that sometimes is denoted with the Page of Wands, that there could be a lot of joy and abundance. Because that energy sometimes comes along with the Three of Cups, but this could also be someone who is very immature and involved with third parties. The Three of Cups, it could, it's too many uh, people. They've come a long way from there. Third party energies, all that stuff, like that's what's underneath the Temperance card. They've come a long way since then. Like, as far as the Divine Feminine is concerned, they don't compete. They don't compete for the Divine Masculine because there's no competition. The Divine Feminine won't compete with other karmics for the Masculine because there is no competition. She's the Divine Feminine. She's really well aware right now. The Divine Masculine at this point is in competition as a page with... other energies of higher higher stature, higher vibration. I mean, we've got third party energy all over the divine masculine counterpart side. I think the divine feminine is looking at joy and their own reinvention and I, I feel like that might be the energy that is pushing the divine masculine to cut off these third party energies because the feminine is elevated like the divine counterpart hasn't the divine masculine counterpart has not reached a level that there is no competition in regards to them like the divine feminine counterpart has reached a level where there is no fucking competition they are the fucking creme de la creme best partner for the masculine they've reached that the masculine is definitely still catching up to that energy We have no major arcana on the masculine side between the three decks. So they are literally writing their own story. They're not going through any milestone uh, energies right now with major arcana. This is a world completely of their choosing. The divine feminine has the hierophant and temperance. So it's Sagittarian energy, Tarian energy. It is quite possible, too, that the Divine Feminine counterpart is humoring the idea of a, of a different counterpart with the Three of Cups there. If not outright with a third party, then they're at least accepting the idea that there may need to be someone else if the masculine is not on their level. They're accepting the idea that maybe someone else is out there on their level. Because they're commitment oriented, right, with the Hierophant. They're the teacher. They're the teacher, and the Hierophant is, is sometimes a card of marriage. 
being committed before the divine. They may have seriously married themselves and the higher order of things and married spirit, which is only going to manifest in their outer experience, their marriage material. Divine feminine is marriage material. Divine masculine is, is not there yet. insight into the events insight into the events that have not yet transpired what possible future path is indicated between these two what is the potential future unfolding from where they are right now What is the potential outcome? got the magician and death how did i do in the reverse oh if that's not divine got the magician and death in the reverse gemini energy virgoian energy scorpionic energy <laughs> i flipped the whole deck upright and the ace of pentacles still flew out in the reverse As long as there is manipulation, as long as there's third party manipulation, there will be no transformation and there will be no Ace of Pentacles new beginning. The Ace of Pentacles that the Divine Masculine counterpart wants and feels the desire to create with the feminine. If, there, if there's manipulation, if there's third parties, if there's no transformation, ego death right with the death card in reverse if there's no ego death and there is no new beginning page of pentacles ten of swords Yeah, so long as the masculine is connected to third parties, whatever opportunity attempts to be created, whatever whatever it is that they try, whatever seed they try and grow, whatever they try and offer to the feminine, it's just they're, it's just going to backfire. They're going to feel betrayed by the feminine, like the, the feminine didn't take their offer, and it's because the alignment's not there. I don't care if the third party is family. I don't care if the third party is longtime friends. I don't care if the third party is a work case scenario all of the above if it's toxic it's toxic if it's not in alignment with the high feminine if it's not in alignment with the highest good of the masculine themselves then it's it's there is no offer that they could make the feminine that it would work out unless it's severed unless all of the ties are severed and we've got the queen of pentacles and she's pregnant that's what follows the ten of swords That is one potential path. If there is if there's manipulation and no transformation, if the third parties are not cut off, then a new foundation cannot be started. And nothing that the masculine offers the feminine will turn out and the feminine is going to end up creating something somewhere else or birthing a new reality, if not a child outright. Give me another potential path, please, Spirit. Three of Cups. What is this other potential outcome?
got the three of cups the judgment card again with scorpionic energy the moon piscean energy the four of swords the queen of swords and justice that's crazy because I'm getting this a few ways the third parties could definitely be pulled into another direction they could be following their own their own soul's calling and or if you're dealing with certain individuals they they may no longer um you know, they may no longer be in, in the life of the masculine. Take that how it resonates. It is underneath the death card. And I'm not one that predicts death. But the way these cards lay out, especially because the four of swords here is a double coffin. There's two coffins here. that frees up that frees up the counterpart it frees up the queen of swords energy and there's justice the scales are balanced that's a potential path for some of you Let's just go with that they, they have their own soul calling somewhere else and they go for that. <laughs> Which might blindside the counterpart that, you know, the masculine energy that has third parties leaving, they might not have expected that with the moon. That may be hidden from them. Give me one more potential path, potential outcome. Because there's many paths, right? One path, trying to manipulate, not changing, not starting a new foundation, ends in sabotage and a very pregnant counterpart. Or a very pregnant person in general, birthing something new. Another path is definitely third parties getting called elsewhere and freeing up. A counterpart so that justice can be had so that scales can balance third potential outcome starts with the ace of swords this third path the knight of cups the four of cups The three of coins, the two of cups, Give me one more. and the ten of wands. I think the third potential outcome is the truth. It starts with the truth with the ace of swords, something coming to light. I think with the Knight of Cups, it's a very um, heartfelt expression about how an opportunity was missed being involved with these third parties. That being locked into that contract with the soulmate, with a third party soulmate, it was burdensome. It felt like a cockroach on their back. literally it starts with honest and heartfelt sincere communication and the acknowledgement the acknowledgement 
that an opportunity was missed that resulted in energetic burden and moving forward with the six of swords on the bottom and the six of coins on top that there could be reciprocity because you know and allowing the scales to balance right where the masculine owes the feminine until because the scales are not balanced the masculine owes the feminine if there's going to be forward movement then the divine masculine has to make it up to the feminine like sorry i fucked up please let me make it up to you and balance the scales let me give you what you deserve type energy so we've got three different potential paths One, honest to God, is successful. The third path is successful. That requires, that requires honest and heartfelt communication. An acknowledgement that the third party contracts is a fucking soul burden that is like a cockroach on your back and cannot continue forward. Like, if you're going to move out of a situation and into a new one, you're not going to bring your cockroaches with you. You know? You're not going to bring your cockroaches with you. Like, come on, guys. We're moving into a whole new life, whole new world. It's a dream. Come on, cockroaches. Come on. I'm like, no. Third party's got to get cut off. They hold no place. Third parties hold no place and divine counterpart connections so yeah there's definitely a chance for success but all the third parties got to go all the third parties got to go romantic or otherwise all all labels aside doesn't matter it doesn't matter who they are it doesn't matter what your nostalgia emotional sentimental connection is to them it doesn't matter it doesn't matter guidance this is my fairy oracle by brian brown and you know what let's use these too these are the Sacred Mirror cards by Alex Gray. Given there's nudity on these cards, if you ain't adult enough to handle it, sign off. <laughs> if you ain't adult enough to handle it, sign off. <laughs> adult images. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull this one first. So the spirit... What is a guiding message for the counterparts from the sacred mirrors cards? Why would you draw me to this deck? What message? Sophia. Sophia. That is divine feminine right there. It says, Sophia, wisdom stretched forth her finger and introduced light into matter. And she followed it down into the region of chaos. Her halo sacred language beyond rational understanding infinite vision and wisdom united as one level of being hands the eminent manifestations of the goddess life-giving nurturer cradle of civilization and kali dark mother of time birth death mother light living 
guiding presence of the principle of transcendental truth, goddess as Gnostic vessel of rebirth and spiritual transformation, a guide for the times of crisis humanity is now facing, having embraced the entire world in her spirit nourished heart, new order of awakening humanity awaits incarnation. The reflection is wisdom. You can screenshot that if you'd like. Sophia. The divine feminine counterpart is in her fucking high energy. Let this be divine confirmation of what the fuck I just said. And the divine masculine, the wisdom, right, that the feminine is holding, it's literally the reflective word is wisdom. Like, divine masculine's got to tune in to align with this. Yeah, it's very Kali, Goddess Kali, who is the destroyer of destroyers. Demons cannot withstand the force of Goddess Kali. She is the destroyer of demons and all that is evil. And with the thousands of eyes in the image, because they're all over the background and they're all over her body, it reminds me of Goddess Kuan Yin. Goddess Kuan Yin has a thousand eyes that she sees all of humanity with. <laughs> Goddess Kuan Yin is a no soul left behind type energy. She's a healer of the ages and ascended master. Kuan Yin was once human and ascended. Compassion and nurturance. Divine feminine is, is otherworldly. Her vibration is otherworldly. Undressing of a salad and the singer of courage. Cards 31 and 8. The green woman is on the bottom of the deck. All right, the undressing of a salad. Keywords are balance, avoiding extremes, achieving the impossible, and being impossible. Brian called this painting the dressing of a salad. But in an earlier stage of the Good Fairies, Bad Fairies manuscript, it was the undressing of a salad. Oh, Brian called the painting the dressing of a salad, but it was in earlier manuscripts the undressing of a salad. She's combined the names because they show us the important aspects of the card. The dressing of a salad requires a good balance. Disparate elements must blend into tasty whole. The undressing of a salad requires truly remarkable adroitness. At first, one might think it impossible, but Adroito, whom we see busily balancing magical balls, is the fairy of doing impossible things. He is also the fairy of being impossible and the fairy of avoiding extremes. Sound impossible? Well, of course it is. Both Adroito and Sally, who's crouched above him, are intently focused on balancing things, and the large gnome in the center finds this very amusing. 
He looks in two directions at once, seeing the impossibility of keeping things that are in constant motion and balance at all times, like the juggling act of life. Of course, we all fall out of balance. Of course, we occasionally drop the ball. Sometimes we drop the ball or a bird flies by and snatches it from us and we just have to invent another one. Sometimes this seems as impossible as undressing a salad. There are times when we have to turn bad luck into good, and that isn't always easy, especially if someone else seems determined to turn good luck into bad. Everything is integrating and disintegrating at the same time. Confusion is rife but we still try to create order and put things into balance. The whole universe is hurling through time at an astonishing rate, and it is very difficult to keep balance on a rapidly moving object, especially as it appears to lurch unpredictably from time to time. Sooner or later, Adroito or Sally or both will drop their balls. The sulky looking fellow on the left is clearly waiting to snatch one or two so that he can play too. Or maybe just so that Adroito and Sally cannot. My money is on Adroito though. He is smart enough to realize that old balls wear out and new ones must be brought into play. He is ready to deal with this. The balance changes constantly, but it is still balance. Things are in motion and the outcome is impossible to predict, which might be why I decided to do three different paths. <laughs> Things are in motion and the outcome is impossible to predict. A cool head is required to deal with. To, a cool head is required to deal with this, as is a readiness to jump in whichever direction seems appropriate. Exercise cool judgment while staying ready for the unpredictable. Sudden changes of fortune may appear good or bad, but they are in flux and can be rechanneled if necessary. Develop poise and stay calm. You can come out a winner here, but it is likely to take concentrated effort. Use power with delicacy and discretion. That's what I was talking about. You can't manipulate or choose to not heal things. Sometimes things can take a crazy turn and people get freed up because other people make choices and decisions. And sometimes we just simply have to act in our, in our own truth and be real. Whatever, whatever it is, whatever path you end up on, one that I talked about or one completely different altogether. Life is constantly changing. Life is constantly in flux. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Every outcome, including a successful, beautiful one, is possible. You are possible. You can be what seemingly impossible. You could be completely new. You can completely turn over a new leaf. You can be completely different. It seems seemingly impossible because people change so often, right? You can be the impossible. You can be the success story. You can be the villain when you've always been the angel at least the way you're perceived by other people. If you're cutting off third parties, you're definitely most likely to be vilified by the third parties you're cutting off. You've always been their angel. You can be what seems impossible because balance. Balance, because balance. singer of courage key words are bravery sublimation of fear and moral strength 
someone once said that courage is not the absence of fear, but that which enables us to experience fear and not be stopped by it. It is also what enables us to do what we believe to be right, even when there is pressure from others around us to do otherwise. It is what enables us to go ahead into the unknown or the perilous where there are no guarantees of safety or security. Courage. In our lives, we are often, even constantly confronted with a new world, a new way of being in the world, a new way of seeing and being seen. Ordinary living takes courage and to rise above the ordinary into the extraordinary takes even more courage. One of the keys to courage is to consider the fear and find a way to let the energy of the fear itself power the action. That is true courage. Often people think of courage as being part of high heroism. It is, but it is also it also has its quiet hidden side as well. And that may require greater courage because we cannot expect the rewards of praise and approval for it. For example, no courage is needed to be unhappy and self-pitying. We do not need to be self-disciplined or wise for that. However, to open our hearts to the risks and vulnerability of joy and trust requires all of those things, especially courage. Within each of us, there is a terrified inner mouse and there is the brave inner hero. Either part of us can take over from the other. We get to choose which is in charge. The mouse is a magician with only one trick. It can cast an illusion that it is as big as an elephant. Then fear nearly overwhelms us, but we still have choice. Learning to live with and manage the reactive animal within involves transforming emotions like rage and fear into courage through self-discipline and the help of the singer of courage. The singer of courage is associated with Archangel Ariel. Most people have decided by the age of three or four what they must do in order to survive. From this decision, this belief about how the world is, most of our fears and self-limitations grow. Have we the courage to discover and break through these limiting beliefs awaken to greater possibilities and go for our objectives. We need to transcend our fears and accept the gift of courage. Really, courage is not to be without fear. It is to accept that the fear is there and to act anyway. doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people say or even how other people feel about your choices. What matters is that you're in balance, that you trust yourself That if something drops and someone else picks it up, it's because you're meant to find something new. But if you want what you want,
don't let fear stop you. Whatever you do, don't let fear stop you. No matter what the outcome, as impossible as it may be to imagine or fathom right now, don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear stop you. Call in Goddess Kali to help to help you handle your demons. Call in Goddess Kuan Yin so that her thousand of eyes can set on you and show you mercy and compassion with your own actions. Don't be afraid to be different than you've been. Don't be afraid to act in alignment to move towards joy. It takes no courage whatsoever to pity yourself. There's no honor in that either. So have the fucking courage to do it so that you don't put yourself in a self-pitying position later. If you could look back and say, God, I wish I did this, or I wish I did that. What if I did this? What if I did that? If you know in five or 10 years from now, or even a year from now, that that's where you're gonna be. I wish I did this, I wish I did that. What if I did this? What if I did that? Then you should have. So don't let yourself be in, don't let yourself be set up to feel that what if. If you're still thinking about it five or ten years from now, what if you should have had the courage to go after it? That's some wisdom right there. <laughs> if you're gonna what if ten years from now, you're gonna feel bad for yourself ten years from now. For never at least trying, never seeing, never going after it. You should probably go after it. Everything and everyone else will either still be there. Or you would have ended up being unhappy with them anyway. Third parties. You'll be glad you let them go. They are not the purpose of this life. Third party karmic contracts. They're not the purpose of this life. Divine alignment on the other hand. Sophia energy. That's why you're here. Till next time, guys. Take care.